Hello, my name is Michael Martell, and today I'm going to be doing a quick little talk and video about my reaction towards the famous article Body Ritual among the Nakarema by Horace Minor. Uh, what that really meant to me, and then I'm going to be talking about a tradition in the United States, the changes that have happened over the years, and whether those changes have been good or not for the society and development of America. So to start off, I've read this article before, but I didn't really fully grasp the concept when I first read it. So I'm really happy that we had to read it again for the class because I finally got opened up to what it meant. And it was honestly mind blowing. I read the article first in anthropology class like two years ago, but we never did assignments on it. So I was never really forced, I guess, to grasp the concept. So I kind of just went on with the class and didn't really understood what it meant until now. Um, what really blew me away with the article is how the Nakarima culture wasn't actually a tribe, but it more or less was a depiction of the citizens of the United States. In this tribe, they uh, are characterized by having a highly developed market and economy that kind of ensues a rich natural habitat while much of these people's time in that place is devoted to economic pursuits and getting money, a lot of time is also dedicated to like body rituals and stuff. And those body rituals, they're super obsessed with the body. And it kind of depicted how people in the United States seemed like they're too focused on looks and it drives so much business and things in the United States. And sure, it develops money for people, but it's detrimental to our society. And this video kind of made me realize that uh, it was interesting to me because I was like, wow, there's so many things wrong, you know, with the United States that you kind of just move past. And I think that's what the article was, that was the purpose for it, to understand and grasp the concepts of the elephants in the room, you know, and the United States culture that no one really thinks about. So I really enjoyed reading the article, it was great. And I also researched a tradition in the United States. This tradition I chose was the NCAA College Basketball Tournament, or in other words, as we like to call it, March Madness. It is a huge, 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 huge thing in the United States. Everyone watches it, people gamble on it, people do this and that. It's developed by each year, Division One teams across the United States fight to get a chance to be one of the 64 teams that gets put in the bracket. And then eventually it goes down to 16 teams, eight, four, and then the championship. And there's names for these, the Final Four, the Elite Eight, the Sweet 16. And it just creates a lot of stigma, but it's really fun and everyone loves watching it. If you don't watch basketball then or if you don't watch sports I should say then that's probably going to be the only time someone's not watching March Madness but if you like sports even just a little bit you're going to be watching March Madness and it's literally seen by millions and millions at a second across the United States so I couldn't help but look at it because of how much I've watched it and how much I've realized it is sure it's a basketball tournament but it is literally almost important and crucial to American culture. Going back on the history of March Madness and kind of looking at what it means to the US and why it's not just a basketball tournament, but it's really a cultural tradition. It, I kind of connected it to the US values that you typically see in US culture. And that typically tends to be hard work, individualism and material wealth, but also comp competition and opportunity. And I mean, everyone loves to watch sports around the world, but I think this is such a big deal to the US because it's just constant competition over and over. There's so many games, 64 teams, people love it. And I think it ties into the US culture because of that. Everyone loves, you know, a good Cinderella story, a good hardworking story, you know. And March Madness creates a lot of upsets where there's teams that were not supposed to make it far and they end up making it far and everyone just loves that. You can't get away from that, everyone loves that. And it connects to the US because of that individualism and hardworking goals that they set out in the work world because they also love to watch it too. 
I think people love to watch basketball because it brings people together. It, when you play it with people, it brings people together. But I think also watching it brings people together as well. And also just to look at the history of March Madness. It was originated from the OSU basketball coach Harold Olson all the way in 1937 where they originally said, hey, we should make a tournament, and they started with eight teams. And the first title was versus Oregon and Ohio State all the way back then, and Oregon won, and they beat Ohio State, and it was an upset. So it ended up going to 16 teams in 1951, and then it doubled to 32 in 1975, and then it grew to its full size now, which it is, which is 64 teams uh, in 1985. So ever since 1985, it's kind of been the same thing, but this change, I feel like, has been beneficial because it's just simply grown from something small to something big. And it's televised literally everywhere. And it just it brings people together because people are constantly watching these games. You can't really hide or get away from March Madness when it's happening. Even if you don't like basketball, you're going to see it everywhere. And that just ties into why it's more of a tradition instead of just like a basketball tournament. It's literally everywhere. It's culture. It's culture. So the changes obviously were very healthy and beneficial for the culture and the US qualities because sports are just healthy in general. Sports help children and adults develop crucial skills that they need to have in the work world, in the social world. It teaches people how to exist properly, basically. That's a broad way of putting it, but that's how I feel like it is. A study that was written by Kenneth J. Macri at the University of Delaware explains how sports are an essential and important aspect of American society. They are indispensable when it comes to their impact on a plethora of public arenas, including economies and the mass media. It's everywhere, but it's everywhere in a positive aspect. It creates wealth, it creates health, and it creates growth. But sports in general, watching them versus playing them, there's a difference, of course. But you can't get away from the fact that both of those aspects bring people together in a healthy way. There's obviously ways that people can be brought together in America that wouldn't be considered healthy. But the overall history of March Madness and how it's grown to become what it is today and how it's so big, it's just become such an important part of American culture and you can't hide away from it but that's a good thing. Well, thank you for listening to my video about the history of March Madness and also my interact, my uh, reaction on the Nakarema video and article. And I hope you enjoyed my video and watched it.